right, let's try that again. What's on my shirt? Ooh. Oh, nope, that's on my screen. Okay. Hello, music teachers. Uh, my name's Keith, and welcome to the first chapter of The Theory Teacher Teacher. So I'm developing this channel because in the last few years, I've gotten more than a few calls. Well, emails or texts, nobody calls anymore. I've gotten more than a few requests to help people that have suddenly gotten a theory course jumped in their lap and they don't know what to do. It's understandable. Most of us don't get into this business to be theory teachers. We want to be band directors, we want to be orchestra directors, we want to be general music teachers, we want to be choral directors. Get on with it! Yes! Get on with it! Theory is always kind of treated as an afterthought. And in fact, most music education programs, including the one I graduated from, which was very good, don't teach you how to teach theory. Did you have to teach brass? Did you have to teach all woodwinds? Did you have to teach voice? Get on with it! And they do all that stuff great. Theory is just kind of strung along as a musicianship thing that you need to be able to do, but they don't really stress how to teach it. Fortunately, there's a wealth of resources out there. I have 13 years of teaching high school theory to teenagers of various ilks. I'm here to help. So, let's begin. Tip number one, don't panic. You can do this. You can do this. I make light of it, but I understand why you may be panicking. It's probably been a while since you revisited the rules of harmony and voice leading and all that stuff. But don't fret. They will come back to you. What you're going to be doing with your high schoolers is pretty fundamental. Music theory is an enormous body of work and knowledge. People are still getting PhDs in it, discovering new things. You don't have to do all of it. So don't panic. If you teach to the fundamentals, you'll be just fine. Tip number two, find a text or a source you can stick with and use as a guide. There are a lot of them out there. Actually, periodically, I'll be doing some book reviews on this channel. Stay tuned for those. But it need not be a traditional book. Online sources are great. But please stick with something and use it as a guide. It is really easy to get lost in the wealth of material that's out there. Find one that you can live with and stick to it. It's no secret I'm a bit of a bookworm. Look behind me, right? This is my den. In fact, that lower bookshelf over there is mostly music books. I collect theory books because that's who I am. If your school has a shelf full of theory books already, go ahead and use them, unless they're pretty terrible or really dated or something. They're probably okay. You can always supplement. If they don't, or if you're at a school that doesn't have a textbook budget for such things, like my first employer, you can always go on eBay or the Academic Book Exchange and find an older copy at a pretty reasonable rate of a book that you were familiar with. If you'd like some recommendations, go ahead and email me or anyone you trust. <laughs> we'll help you out. Which brings me to my next point. Point number three, reach out to others. Right? There's a lot of us out there. There's one of us in most high schools. If you aren't sure about something or you need help or you need confidence, reach out to us. The theory teachers I've always reached out to have always been wonderful. I have emailed my former college professors, and they have said, Oh, yes, here, take this. We're a helpful bunch. You don't need to go this alone. Tip number four, piano skills. When you're teaching theory, fundamentally what you're teaching are the building blocks of music. There is no greater way to illustrate that than with music itself. So, piano happens to be the best way to quickly illustrate harmonic concepts, melodic concepts, although many instruments can do melody. In fact, all instruments can do melody, but blah. Anyway. Piano is sort of a maid of all work, according to Aaron Copland. So, 
brush up your piano skills. I know most of us were tortured with secondary piano through our college years, and we basically got through it, but here's where you're going to need them. I'm a little biased. I'm a pianist myself, so it kind of comes easy to me. I understand if you're not, but get practicing. Tip number five, review, review, review. There are some concepts we're all good at. And then there are all those other concepts that we need to help with. We need some help with. To help with. We need some help with. I'll give you an example from my own life. Harmony is, traditional harmony anyway, is pretty easy to me. I can voice lead. I'm very good at that. When it comes time each spring to do 20th century techniques, however, I have to review. Getting better every year, but sometimes I need to remember how to do the clock face interval thing. If you don't know what that is, don't worry, we'll get there. So review, review, review. Now, this doesn't mean that you have to build an entire curriculum out of nothing. You don't. If you are in that position, I've been there, I understand. But let's help you out. Now, let's say you're ready to get started. Well, let me bring you to what I call essential free stuff. As you go about your teaching, it's vitally important and important to illustrate theoretical examples with real music. Now, there is a wonderful resource on web which you probably know about. If you don't, well, it's time to get familiar with it. It's called IMSLP, the International Music Score Library Project. It is a treasure trove of pretty much everything before 1920 that's on there. Mostly classical, although it has some pop music and other things on there but it is a great resource for scores. So you can show students concepts in real music. That is very important. Couple that with the fact that pretty much everything is on YouTube these days. You have a winning combination that theory teachers 15 years ago really didn't have. And stress this to your students when they're going out and looking into the ether for pieces and for concepts and things. Point them to IMSLP and you're in good shape. The second thing I think every theory teacher should make use of is the Riemschneider Book of Bach Chorales. You're going to be teaching a lot of harmony, and pretty much any harmonic concept you can encounter is going to be in one of the Bach Chorales, up till some difficult modulations and augmented six chords, but that's down the road. For the study of traditional harmony, you can't go wrong with these. If you want the physical book, it's available and it's cheap. If, on the other hand, you're maybe on a budget, guess what? They're on IMSLP. So here you have a great access to all of Bach's harmonic work. It's pretty incredible. If you can't find it in the Riemschneider, you might not want to be teaching it to ninth graders. So, Mr. Bach, oh, there he is up on the shelf. That's a smoker. I got him at the St. Thomas Church in Leipzig. You could much do much worse than Mr. Bach to start off with. Although he wasn't a great teacher. Didn't like doing bed checks, things like that. More on that later. The third free thing that I'm going to point you to today, third free thing, try saying that three times fast. The third free thing that I'm going to point you towards today is NoteFlight. NoteFlight is an online music notation program. It is free. You can buy, of course, a license to get you more features, but I found that the free version is pretty darn good. Now, this will help you if you need to create worksheets, if you need to create examples, all of that stuff. What's also really great about NoteFlight is it's free for the kids as well. And you can do a lot of sharing back and forth between it. There's a wonderful sharing function buried in there, but you can find it. This is really great because if you're having students work on a longer term project, you can take the hyperlink and if they set it to you know anyone can view you can actually peek over their shoulders with what they're doing sort of the 21st century version of that and and see how they're doing um, without them really knowing about it and as creepy as that sounds sometimes it's very helpful for your own teaching uh, beyond that it's just a really good resource rather than you know shelling out 300 bucks for Sibelius or Finale which are great if you can do that you should do it but a lot of us are on a budget, I understand. NoteFlight is a really great resource, and it has really actually helped change my teaching for the better.
There's another competing program called MuseScore, which is not online, although it is a free download. That is a little bit different setup that's actually set up a little bit more like Sibelius. That has more MIDI sounds in it. It's better if you're doing orchestration or something like that. Um, what it lacks is it's not online and the sharing function isn't quite where NoFlight is yet. Either will work. Find one you're comfortable with and use it. By the way, if any of you are watching this and you have recommendations for free stuff, put them in the comments below and I'll be happy to take a look at them. So, thank you for watching the first chapter of The Theory Teacher Teacher. If you've gotten this far, you're either a theory teacher or possibly my mother. If you have any questions for me, please put them in the comments below or feel free to email me at theory.teacher.teacher at gmail.com. I'll be happy to hear from you and answer any questions you may have. Next chapter is going to be on taxonomy. What to teach and when to teach it. As always, go forth, be musical. See you later.